going to start doing some of these beers for the malt experiment. Just give you some quick notes on it. It is the uh, dry stout recipe from Brewing Classic Styles. It's a Cerveza de Malto Seca. I'm going to try Jason, a.k.a. Mash Paddles beer first for no particular reason other than he used some malt I've never had. So that's what this is all about, it's the malt. The base malts, what we picked was different. Um, just quick uh, notes about the recipe. Uh, it's 1045 was what it's supposed to be and 1012 finishing and uh, final gravity. Should be around 40 IBUs using uh, East Kent Golding Hops. Depending on what the alpha acid was, depending on how much you used. Um, the, the yeast in it was Irish Ale Y Yeast 1084. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty simple recipe. It's um, 7 pounds of base malt, 2 pounds of flake barley. Um, I went ahead and had everybody use a pound of rice hulls because I did a little research on this recipe. And, uh, and it's also uh, 1 pound of powdered black malt, which helps put a lot of uh, the dryness in the stouts. So um, some of the stuff I had read about powderizing that black malt in addition to the two pounds of the flake barley which is sticky was giving some people a fit about uh, stuck sparges so I just had everybody put a pound of rice holes in it and nobody got a stuck sparge I don't think. You know it's only got one drop um, it's got a 60 drop of East Kent Golding Again, depending on what your alpha was, is how much your uh, the recipe this thing called for had uh, five percent alpha acid, so it would have been two point six ounces, and then it would adjust it for what you had. Seven gallon batch pre bull should have been about ten thirty five or eight point nine play doh. It's got a thirty one SRM should have been around about four point two. I think our range is uh, I got like a four two. I think most people got some more between the four two and a uh, less than five percent. This is not supposed to be a gigantic big Russian Imperial Stout or anything like that. Um, and then everybody used a uh, two liter starter. The only thing that really was uh, exotic about this beer was I had a step mash. Um, 120 minutes or 120 Fahrenheit at a 15 minute rest and you raise it up to 150 and then mash it for 60 minutes. And then we all bottle conditioned so we could hit the 1.5 volumes of CO2 that we were shooting for on this beer. So you shouldn't be hearing any push when you open these beers up. They all should be fairly lowly carbonated. It's, it's correct for the style. Uh, he used, Mash Paddle used Mutton's Propino Pale English Malt. Uh, and it's a fairly new malt. It's a spring barley that's excellent, used in a wide range of beer styles. It's a relatively new variety that has a low nitrogen content and a high yield. And that's why the commercial breweries like it because they get lots of sugar out of it. A little bit of grain. So we're going to pop the top on this bad boy and check it out. I have not had any of these yet. I have not cheated. The only one I've tried has been my own. Uh, let's see what he's got on the bottle here for a pop it. It was brewed on November the 7th, 2015, bottled on the 24th. And today is January the 24th, 2016. Light hiss like it should be. Nice smoke coming out. Leave that last little bit in there because these are bottle conditioned. So it is, you know, black like you'd expect. It's a 31 SRM color, so it is very black. It's got a nice light cap on it, um, khaki color. Let's get a nose on it. Ah, oh, it smells really nice. Chocolate, coffee, little tiny bit of astringency to it, which it's supposed to have. 
uh, coming from the black malt. But it almost comes across like this really rich chocolatey coffee flavor, but you can tell it's got the black malt in there. It smells wonderful. Lightly carbonated like it should be. Let's get into it. Cheers. Very smooth. Falls the nose. Um, from what I can remember, I've had a couple of mine. It's very similar. It's a little bit different. It's very nice, very smooth flavor. The main difference I can tell from his is his has got a smoother flavor than mine does. My I use the uh, two row. Uh, Great Northwestern, uh, two row, the same one that Sierra Nevada uses. And mine has that Sierra Nevada kind of flavor to it, if it makes any sense. If you drank much of their beer, you know what I'm talking about. Their, that um, Great Western two row has like this kind of a sharp type of a little drier than this um, flavor. Little more crisp. I don't get if that makes any sense to you. His is more. This pepino is more smooth and more well rounded. Um, it's got nice lacing on it. I did let this beer warm up for about 30 minutes before I opened it out straight out of the fridge. Uh, 30 minutes, so it's like right around where it should be. High 40s, low 50s. Very nice. Um, I will be able to make more of a comparison between each one as I drink more of them. I, the only one I've had has been mine, and like I said, it's been, it's probably been a week or more since I had one of mine, so it's not fresh on my mind uh, exactly how it tastes. I remember mine is a little different from this one, but as far as exactly what the differences is, I'll be able to tell you more about that as I drink more of them. It's got a wonderful nose on it. Um, haven't really brewed too many dry stouts, and got to say this is a this is a real nice one. Uh, definitely check out that recipe and brewing classic styles. Uh, and I think the, the the important thing is is you make sure you get your carbonation levels right on these because if you carb them up like you do an IPA, two two point two, it's gonna have too much of a carbic bite to it. These beers need to be more. It's still got enough to give you the burbs. It needs to be dialed down to one to one and a half volumes of CO2. It makes the beer more pleasant to drink and it also lets you enjoy the flavors uh, of the beer a little more because it's not a hot bomb so you're enjoying the malt more than you are anything else. I'm digging it. Uh, looking forward to getting into the rest of these. Um, the, it's a real nice malt. It works well on dry stout. Uh, check out the Pepino Pale Malt from Muttons. Uh, pretty much says that it works well on about any type of warm ales, the way they describe it on their website. Any warm fermented beer, basically not a lager, I guess is what they mean. The love of bond on it is 1.7 to 2.4, so that's a pretty wide range. Uh, if you wanted to use it in pretty much about any ale, I guess you could. And uh, it's nice. It is a little different from any of the other ones I've used. I'm uh, having a hard time really picking up some good descriptors to describe it to you. It's very, very mellow, very nice. Uh, pleasant drinking beer. really dig it. And so looking forward to getting into the rest of these. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Nice.